So you want to understand pluses and minuses of of both sides, okay? <laughs> Traits that we will be going for and combos to expect from from enemy. Wave state. How to play level one, two, three. Mainly, right? And how to play level, level, level one, two, three. So, based on those things here, I will show you what exactly I, I mean. As long as we're gonna get somebody. Okay, so I believe so. Anne is going to be mid lane. So let's assume Anne is going to be mid lane. I don't think Anne is going to be go to go on top. So, so again, Stani. Anne has fairly short range, mainly playing around Q, and may and also wants to have her passive up the majority of the time. If she has passive up, then we can be looking to go in with E, and time our Q three right when she throws the the Q. Does it make sense? So that we're both mutually stunned, kind of like Ari, but then we get the extended trade. For Correct. The mm -hmm. Correct. Not and not only that, but when we time our Q3 with her Q animation, when we're going to be looking out for it, there is no way our Q is going to miss because she's going to be into an, into an animation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And she won't have enough time to to dodge that. So one is that. Second is wave state. Since Annie is a mage, she's looking at ideally for short burst trades, but can also go for poke trades. And we want to go for the uh, long extended trades, right? As Yone would like to utilize RQ, RE, as much as possible, right? So that means wave is going to be on our side. Level one, we're going to let the guy push towards us, which means we will sit back. We will be fairly chill. We need to preserve our HP for level three plus, okay? And, and that's when we have our full kit to be able to do extended trades. Exactly. That's why we and would like to preserve energy. our HP for up to that point, right? So a tiny bit of poke is going to be okay, but not way too much. Does it make sense? Right. So that means level one and level two, we will allow the guy to push towards us. Ideally, we would like to thin out wave slightly so it doesn't push way, but way too quickly. That it gets to crash at some point. Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. And when we'll have our W at level 2, we can be looking potentially to let the guy walk up towards us, go for the Q, right? Because when we'll see him walking up towards us, we can walk up towards him, and if he continues, then we can be looking to, uh, to let's say, preemptively buffer our W. So we get W shield and tank the Q from his side. Does that make sense? Which is going to be a nice small trade against him. Which will make make him use mana, get an ability on cooldown. We don't take damage, but he takes damage. So it's so it's all pluses for us, right? It's all benefits. I do not hunt to kill. And then level three plus, like we said, we would like to get Q three, so we can go in with EQ three ideally, for some short burst shots. Because if we go for Q three and then a few autos and then, and then E, it's it's going to be okay. Like that's possible as well, but it's not going to be as good. Does it make sense? Because we don't really have as much attack speed to utilize autos. Does it make sense? It does. So just a quick EQ3, for example, out of W into one more auto maybe is going to be more than enough this early on. As you can see, he's uh, walking up towards me, so I'm watching his movement. I'm walking away. He stays left side, or I stay right side, so we can keep as much distance as possible between the two of us. That here is actually kind of okay because he's taking some minion aggro, as you can see, right? Mm -hmm. So we pretty much yep. traded HP, even HP, which is okay for me. The slow push is slightly happening towards me. As you can see, I'm sometimes I'm walking up, so but the majority of the time I'm just uh, laid back. I'm going to walk up for this, that's going to be okay, the damage is not way too much. Now you'll see anytime soon he's going to walk up, yep. But he didn't go for the Q on me, he went for the Q on the minion. As you can see, I didn't uh, thin out the wave way too much. Just enough where it gets to push towards me, but not way too quickly, like we said, right? Yep. And since, uh, as you can see here, I'm going to be walking up, see? And he goes for the Q, which I told you about. My Q... My, 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in the, in the whole time, or like during this whole time, I'm watching his movement, and I'm moving based on that. He's gonna be walking up for this, yeah, for this minion. So we go for the poke. We would like to slightly pull this minion to the left. So that's why I walked up like that. He fucked up his ability, and mm -hmm. he also used his ability, uh, his uh, his stun. So that gave me the green light to go in. Does it make sense? So like we mm -hmm. said, it's it's mostly about his passive. When it comes about us not being able to walk up and fight him. So once I saw that he fucked up his passive, I immediately took advantage of that. My E is coming back up. I know he's gonna be walking up for this, see? It was really obvious based on based on his movement. And now I'm allowed to go ahead and slightly chase him. See, like here, uh, all of this happened just because I was looking for those small cues. So when he was walking up mm -hmm. and the Mews was low on HP, I knew he was going to actually fully commit for that and, and go for it. And even though we have been taking so much poke from him, and, the, and like we have eaten like maybe 4Q, W plus auto combos combined with Electrocute, we are still higher HP than he is. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, the, u the, the use of our W, right? And being able to... To know when exactly we can actually walk up and take some poke compared to when not to, right? So all the poke that I that I got was actually out of value because it helped me toward, towards achieving my goals, which was holding the wave in this position, being able to go for some uh, short burst trades and so on. Here we got to time the ability, like we talked about. This is going to be okay. Yep. Because now you we can just TP back and you have. Correct. Resource advantage. Mm -hmm. He can't also push the wave in time. Or at least he might be able to push it, but I won't really lose any minions. Or I will lose barely any. Does that make sense? Yep. But you got his ignite and he's roughly half health. Correct. Yep. And now when I go back to lane, as we know, when your opponent is low on HP and he's looking to recall, we would like to shove in the wave as quickly as possible towards their side. Which is what Annie should be looking out for right now. If not, then it's going to be okay. I will simply push the wave and I will pin him under the tower, which will make it very difficult for him to to play because he will have a bunch of gold in his inventory, but it will not be usable until he gets to recall. Does that make sense? In this case, as we can see, the guy has already recalled. Because of the monish as well, we're going to be able to get this played very quickly. See, and all of this is once again just basics. We have not really been doing any, anything too fancy. Everything that I told you up to this point from the game plan, we got to do it. Yep. His wave clear is fairly is fairly slow, especially in this in this wave since it is a it is a cannon wave and it is a cannon wave. And as you can see, the guy is trying to just um, do the slow push and use his Q for the minions. We are allowed to go ahead and recall, which is actually a cannon recall in this case, because we go back to lane and the wave still has not crashed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And we actually come back to lane with uh, almost the same value of items as as he does. So 450, 300. Another, another like 350 if I'm not mistaken. Or 300 it is. I actually forgot. 350 on the mana crystal, 300 on the boots, 250 on the mm -hmm. yeah, purple. Yeah. You, you are correct. He's going to be walking up for this one. Right? W for his, for his thing. And now immediately get to slide to chase him. That's okay. He went for, for the, for the E. This should is still okay for us. He's gonna be looking, yep, for that. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the damage on him as well because he had some movement speed going on. That here is not way too bad. It is okay. Diana is coming. We should be able to. Oops, unfortunately. Fortunately, she made a small sidestep and I didn't really expect that to happen, sadly. Yeah. Uh, did we fully crush? Uh, it's gonna be slow pushing slightly towards me because of T-verse. Her flashing. Yeah, in, in that case, I was... Uh, based on his movement, I was expecting him to actually go slightly sideways. But yeah, that wasn't the case. He should be looking for the vehicle at this point since he got the kill on me. So we quickly shove in the wave. Right, hitting as many minions as possible as we can with uh, RQ and W. We'll be able to get this plate as well. So now, be, being able to have the bullish, this uh, gets to compensate in this case for us getting killed. 
and making that small mistake. But he basically got 300 gold, we got 250 from the plates, right? So that's pretty much uh, a compensation for that. I'm gonna go for Wits and first item. It's kind of weird, but since I'm playing against two AP champions, as you can see, Malphite and yeah. Annie, I'm gonna go for that. If you have noticed, he's saving his E very frequently for... Annie's going towards bot lane for this fight. He's saving his E very frequently for once I go in, he gets to use the movement speed to get away from me. Right now he has T1 boots, I have full boots, so I'm gonna be able to keep up with him even after him using his E. He's here, he will go slightly sideways, that is okay. We're gonna be able to get some damage, I believe Diana should be able to get a kill. Yep, she is. Nice. So I let the guy get that and we get to immediately shove in the way. Line up the minions, right? And hit all of them at the same time, if we can of course, if not as many minions as possible at the, at the same time. Once again, Demolish is coming in clutch, since we're gonna be able to yeah. get this plate once again, right? That's why I really like it. You're saving a bunch of time and you are also getting gold. As you can see, nobody in uh, the game has gotten three plates up to this point. And Demolish, so far so long, has done a uh, thousand damage. <laughs> I'm gonna get Q3, I know this guy's coming back to lane right now. I will start to back away, he'll use an ability on the wave, which means the stun is going to be down. Why did he stood still? I got no clue. And we can go Actually, for our I'm gonna stay for this wave quickly since I'm fairly healthy. This is also a cannon wave, which will give me a very decent amount of gold. Saw him walking up, right? So it makes it very obvious that he's gonna be looking for the Q. Once again, same thing here. Sadly, my W wasn't that well timed. Ooh, that was a nice timing of of his abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna be waiting if slightly. If you down, you can all in. I'm gonna be waiting slightly here. He's, I don't think he's gonna see my TP, most likely, because the majority of people here in the slot do not. His flash is down as well. We can be looking for the ultimate. He will stun me, oh, I know nice. that, so I, st so I stay in front of him. And we're gonna be able to get the kill just like that. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, sadly, I, I still die because of his flash. Or maybe I do not. If he queues up. Yeah, queues yeah, up. And for uh, at least I, got, I got the flash. I got no, uh, no, he didn't flash. So in this case, I didn't get his, his, his flash. His ultimate and wasted time. Yeah, but in this case, I got uh, the kill. So one for one, I wait. I got to force Malphite to use or like spend quite some time for me afterwards for the kill. And it also costed his flush and his ultimate, which is good for the for the rest of my lanes. Based on what we knew from before, this guy has still T1 boots, which is good for me. I will be able to chase him down very easily. I need to get slightly adapted to the playstyle of this guy as well, because he's playing a bit unorthodox, I, a bit unusual compared to the way that I have been expecting him the majority of the time. And if you notice, every single time the guy is just saving his E not to catch up to me, but to try and create some distance between me and him. That he was expected as well, as we saw he was walking up towards me while I was walking up towards him as well, right? Did you notice? Mm -hmm. Here's stacking up Q uh, a few seconds before my E comes up from cooldown. But the guy noticed it and he slightly backed away. He should be walking up yeah, anytime soon. Uh, yeah, he's, he's pacing fairly, fairly well. I don't think this guy's... Th this guy's yellow is like silver gold. He's making some... Like typical rookie mistakes and uh, a few short burst shots like I was telling you from before. Like this one. I'm kind of worried to some extent for getting a CC chain by Ani and Malphite. Malphite, I have not seen the guy for... I could have ulted over there, but if I'm not mistaken, his flash should be up now. So it's very risky for me to do so like that. I would really like to get the flash from this guy by using EQ3. Or when he's... Uh, or when his stun is going to be done for me to just simply walk up with my E like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you notice how he started back in a way because his uh, stun was uh, was down. Once again, getting my Q3 right when my E comes up from cooldown, he will be going... Yep, see? Just like I was telling you, I would like to get his yep. flash from, from that. We know now that Malphite is on the right side of the lane, so quickly I'm going to drop one, one ward down here just in case. I have I have one anyway, so 
This guy's very low on HP. I know that they're looking, <laughs> that they're looking to bait me. And there's this guy. Yeah. Wasting his time. Going back and forth. I don't really mind that. That is... What well, really is here, so I do mind that. Well, yeah, I did not really expect this guy to actually come. So uh, that is a bit unfortunate. They send the Avengers after you? Yes, sadly. Then I wasn't really expecting this guy to actually come here when it was really that ungankable and Annie wasn't able to follow up, but yeah. If you are serious about ranking up and feel stuck, ForgivingBladCoaching.com is the right place for you. You can be assured with high quality coaching, many options to choose from, flexible work hours and because we believe in what we do, we offer a money back guarantee if you fail to reach your goals while actively following our guidance. Don't believe me? Check out the results and what our students have to say. So what are you waiting for? Try this quickly by clicking the link in the description below and get the run we've always been dreaming of. Yeah, against those guys, I wouldn't really like to stay at this point since enemy team is fairly ahead and me fighting on a 2v1 or something like that is it really going to be such a good moment in this game to do so because I'm not like who knows how strong right like for sure I have a full item but that full item is mainly aimed for those two guys so I'm gonna be looking to be on the sideline mostly right now and looking to get some solo XP and gold from the waves we know that the majority of them are on both sides, so one, two, three guys, four and five. Irela is going to be coming towards me right now. So, yeah, there she is. Get Q3, get over the wall, CBA with this guy. So, let's go now towards... I got ulted, but that is okay. Irelia is on mid lane. Yeah, this guy's <laughs> coming. Eat. This guy's coming as well. The very nice kill from... My teammates over there. Let's get to stock up my my Q. Nice. We can be looking to go for Irelia. I would like to actually get on top of this guy. Yeah, we should be able to get him. Perfect. Nice. Well, is here as well, so uh, we will be yeah. able to stock up our Q. He will be looking to jump. I know that. He will be going here over the over the wall just nice. to make sure and kill him as quickly as possible. I'm going to flash. At this point, it is it is better to be safe than sorry because we are behind as a team, as a whole. And getting kills like this is actually really crucial for me to get back into the game. Does it make sense? So saving a flash just to get a kill five seconds later, which can potentially mean that I will not get the kill, is not worth it. Does it make sense? <laughs> now, yep. Yeah, he's dead because of ultimate. I think so, at least. Nice, we'll be able to get the kill on this guy, I need to slightly kite him, perfect, just like that. Right, very important, like we have been saying the, during the other lessons, is to not panic, you need to stay calm. Panicking, even if a situation is going to be really stressful, does not really help you. So try to be as cold as possible. This guy should and be you didn't need to do the damage there. Like, you could kite back to bait him, but you could allow your teammates to do the damage. Bait him? Not exactly. Like, in this case, what I was doing by moving backwards, most likely this guy will come towards me, is I was making myself look killable, so his attention is going to be on me, and he will go, like, back and forth of me. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's going mm -hmm. to be a bit more difficult for him to make a decision as to, like, will he actually go for me, will he go for my teammates? Then I go close, I'm killable, then I go away, I'm not killable, I go close, I'm killable, and I get to repeat that. Does that make sense? Yep. And if you notice, like, all of those things which I'm able to do is because I'm seeing things from the perspective of my opponent. Does that make sense? So I'm two, three yep. steps ahead of them, pretty much all the time. If I know what most likely they're going to be looking to do. This guy should be looking to keep on pushing, I believe. Yeah, no stacks on his... On his passive. Ah, uh, we well, almost got it. It's okay. I should still be able to look for the kill just to make sure. Yeah, my teammate is over here, so I won't really bother. Yeah, see? Nice. Just making sure, right? In, the, in that case, if my teammate was not going to be here, I was still going to just slide it back away, just like I did in this case. But I was going to, first of all, stack up my Q, get rid of his bear, and then go a for a quick EQ3 on him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And if necessary for my shield, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get my shield 
while traveling towards him and his Q was going to go out first. So I was going to W on a minion before jumping in with EQ3. Does it make sense? So I'll go W on a minion and then EQ3 towards him. Does it make sense? So I yep. have the shield which I need to survive his Q but still get the kill on him. Yep. My teammates are like fine and will need some help most likely. Vars should be coming. He should be on his way. Maybe he's coming somewhere here from the left. Or actually his mid lane. So mid -lane. because of that, our plan... You see how quickly things change? Mm -hmm. So we go immediately to, towards bot lane. Not wasting time. Not, not just getting stuck onto one thing. We need to see what's happening here. Ivela is spawning within a few seconds. She will most likely be going towards mid lane, I believe. Because uh, there is pressure being applied. As we can tell. So I will keep on pressuring bravely. On mid lane, as we can see, really, I should be on mid lane, if I'm not mistaken. If not, then I get this trinket quickly. Yeah, but there is really, as, yep. as you can see. So I get the tower first, and then I'm gonna be looking to go towards mid lane. I don't really care about Malphite. We can go for a quick auto, get fleet. I will go towards mid lane, stack up my Q in the meantime, which is something that you're not doing enough. Just getting to stack up your Q like this. Because now I have a Q3, and I can just use it freely. For example, I can just get over this wall quickly and save some time. And this guy's gonna be most likely looking for his Q, so we get to cancel it. We need to be a bit more patient. And if you noticed here, I got to time my Q3 right when he went for an auto, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was like actively, my eyes were on him and seeing what exactly he's doing, just to see this auto attack animation going off. And that was immediately my green light to go ahead and use my Q. Because we, we know how Aurelia really is, right? Like, Aurelia just jumps left, right, and it's chaotic. Yeah. Aurelia really is kind of missing. Oh, Aurelia really is mid lane, okay. Good. Everybody is mid lane. Malfati was somewhere top side, or something like that. So I'm gonna keep on pushing towards bot lane. If they keep on pushing on the mid lane, I don't feel the mind. I don't care, to be honest. I can't stop them, regardless. So, mm -hmm. I will keep on pushing, so at least I can get to trade something. They will be able to most likely just open base and maybe get in here, but that's going to be it. They can't really go any further because our bot is spawning. You see, nobody is still here for me. Yeah, which for me is big. So quickly, blue trinket. That's why I love the. Uh, that's why I love blue trinket. Last auto and the void grabs yeah. plus the the minions just get to finish the job for me. It's now they are fucking broken up. They are broken up. See, two guys mid lane, yep, yep. two guys, uh, two guys at base. Then this guy appears again, and they are all just up. spread around the map. Unfortunately, my teammates get to get to mess up, so what I do is I would simply just immediately recall. My TP won't really matter in this case because it's only this guy. But yeah. This, for example, wasn't going to be happening if. Like, us getting this opportunity wasn't going to be happening yeah. if I was not pushing bot lane. Not sure. I don't know why they didn't do that though. It didn't make any sense. Malfat is here, yeah, he has ultimate, that's why they are still staying. That was the only thing that actually made sense. If I see minions, I'm gonna ult, get Q3. But actually, Red is kinda close, so maybe it's going to be kinda questionable. Or maybe not. They... They, they hard trolled. I know Red is gonna be looking yeah, for the jump, so I save my... My thing for... For Rel jump. My Q3, see? Wow. Th that's that why That's why well the played. guy was walking up. I knew Rel is kinda close from before when, I, when we saw the moment speed boost. If that makes sense. And that's why I went in like this on Irelia, but then my Q3 was held because I knew, like, Vel was coming. I saw it. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And I knew she was yeah. going to be looking for the jump. Like, why else would Irelia, I mean, Vel be coming towards me like that? Like, what else will she use? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Same thing is applied on, on the Orchard. There's a big wave stack it up on bot lane, so we're going to be looking to go for that. I would like to get the item. Let's quickly go E, so I get the wave, and I also get my Q3. Ah, uh, they're gonna be looking for something cool uh, Fuck me, man. This kinda sucks to some extent, because everything is going to be super chaotic. I would like to stack up my Q from Tibers. My Garen is really ambitious, and he thinks he can tank a bunch. Okay, let's kill this guy. I was looking for uh, an EQ3 flash. Like this one, for example. 
but they uh, sadly got out of uh, proportion, if that makes sense. This is going to be fun, it's only one minion. So we are actually good. Gar needs to stay for this wave, yep, exactly my guy, thank you. Here on this team fight as well, I don't know if you noticed, but I was looking forwards, like I was just, my eyes were on uh, the opponents, if that makes sense, and seeing their positioning. At one point, they were... At one point, they were together. I don't like this. It's not available anymore. And mm -hmm. that's why I didn't go for it. I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger. But as you saw, You're very patience. patient with your R. Yeah, so patience in that case really paid off because I couldn't really use it for something better in that case. And as you saw, the ultimate made a fairly nice difference. Everybody's pushing, he's going for Drake. And they didn't really pay attention to the minimap seems like. I didn't really expect something like this. Maybe one guy is going to be here, but my ultimate is up. If it's going to be somebody squishy, then I'll be able to just kill kill them. For the moment, nobody is here. And I will be able to get this tower. Maybe I fully commit. Nice. Yeah, this guy should have ultimate, I believe. Yep. <laughs> yeah, let's keep him. Yep. Ultimate him. Uh, I slightly messed up my, my execution. Very well played, though. I wasn't that well played because I wasn't able to kill the guy. Because I greeted my E. I was going mostly to kill the guy without my E. But if I did, you saw the amount of HP that he had at the end. I was basically one E and a, and a Q. And then E again, and the guy was dead. And see, all of those things that, were, that I told you about, that I wrote here, all of this helped us to get through the landing phase and know what exactly we need to be doing. Everything that I told you, I got to do in this case, right? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there was slight uh, misjudgment on the, of the guy as to how he was going to play. As you saw, he actually played fairly well. I even got to point a few things about the way that he was playing that actually impressed me and caught me off guard. But in general, the majority of the things, you saw how it was. Like, yeah. The, the stacks were up, he was looking to walk up, he had the pressure, so I expected it, right? So he had stacks, mm -hmm. I expected it. He was close to stacks, I expected it as well. And I was looking to play around it. When, at some point, like it was level 3 or 4, do you remember how he got to fuck up his stacks? Or like it was maybe even level 2? He fucked mm -hmm. up his, his stacks and I immediately went in. Do you remember? Yep. Alright, so, actually I was wondering if this guy was uh, really well done. And I will honor Annie as well. Yeah, because not everything went perfectly that game with your team. Oh, like oh, ev never. It, like even oh, in, even in the landing phase for the game plan that you will make, it will never go perfect. It's it, mm -hmm. uh, like it will go perfect, but it's going to be very difficult to do so. Right? Yeah. It's going to be extremely rare. But all of, like the plans that you get to make and the goals that you get to set for yourself is simply to put you towards a, a good direction for you to know what the fuck is going to be going on once you go in the game. Like what exactly you should be expecting from the guy to be doing. Right, because for example, a good Annie player should be looking to play around his stacks. Should have his stacks up the majority of the time. If he has no stacks, he should not be walking up. If you notice, he was doing that sometimes. When his stacks were down, he was actually positioning much further back in the lane. Yeah. So does that make sense? It does. And when I was looking to go in, it was really frequently when, for example, like an ability from him was down. Or I was timing my Q3 with his stun. And then I was following up with my E. Right? A mistake from his side, for example, was that he was falling on my trap. Which was, I was giving him some space and then he just kept on pushing. Mm -hmm. In overextending, which gives you the... Exactly. Like If you stack a Q3 up, you can even just go through his stun. Mm -hmm. Or like trade stuns and then full like extended trade on him. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you had noticed another time was when I when I went on him and he had no stacks, like he had two, like maybe two, two stacks. Afterwards, because I knew his stun was going to be coming up and he was going to stun me, I wasn't going for, the, for any autos. I was simply walking in front of him. So when he was going to stun me, he was still going to be really close to me. Does it make sense? Because I see it and I know. Okay, he has two stuns, or like two stacks. He's going to get his stun up within within like, let's say, two, three seconds. Because he will go for an EW, for example, or like an EQ, right? 
And then immediately I know, like, he's going to be looking for the stun. So if I, I would stay for an auto, he will keep on walking away. And then when he goes for the stun, there is going to be so much distance between the two of us that will get, that will, that will get disabled from being able to do anything. Does it make sense? Makes complete sense. Right? And all of this is once again like getting to see things from the perspective of your opponent and knowing what most likely they are going to go for they are going to go for by the book, right? If they don't, it's going to be fine because then you can see, okay, like you didn't do this and I'm going to punish you, right? Yeah. Because if you know how things are supposed to be done, but then you see that they're not done as they're supposed to be done, then you can exploit it because you know this is a mistake. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. And I